Welcome back to my tutorials on how to use Affinity Designer. Previously, I went over the basics. Now, I am going to be going over a new tutorial on how to create cartoon looking characters with the tools offered in Affinity Designer. The only requirement is that um, you need to know a little bit on how to draw. Very common in vector drawing is to draw in closed paths with the exception of making some open paths for line indications. But trying to figure out how to do it can get confusing. So later, I decided to try drawing more naturally by drawing in all open paths with closed fills in a layer behind. But that makes things harder to go back and edit. So then I came up with a third technique to draw everything in partially closed paths with fills applied but then that makes things hard to figure out how to draw them. All this was explained in the Affinity Designer Tips and Tricks video 5 on the three drawing techniques. So whichever technique you use depends on what it is you are trying to achieve. In this example of Angie reading, you'll see that everything is mostly in closed paths. But you can change the rules a little bit depending on what it is you are trying to achieve. So for the arm um layer, I'm going to uncheck this so not all layers are selected when I create a bounding box. So I'm going to create a bounding box over this part of the arm and you'll see that this part of the arm is a partially closed path. And I did that on purpose in case I decided that I want to um, rotate her arm a little. Because if all of her arm was one closed path, then I wouldn't be able to adjust the joint. And let's say I wanted to have her fingers bend too. Then in that case, each finger, each uh, joint would have to be a partially closed path as well. But you'll see that the hand is all one path. So keep all this in mind when drawing. Now before I start, I'm going to be going into the document setup and I'm gonna uncheck portrait. I want to have my document faced landscape instead. Now for this tutorial we are not going to be using any reference images. We're not going to be making a basic sketch first even though it is recommended that you make a basic sketch first. The reason we are not going to be doing that is because I want to show you what vector tools are already in designer. So I'm going to take the pencil tool and we're going to start from scratch. And up here where it says width, I'm going to increase this to about 2. Oh, and by default the stabilizer is off. So if I try drawing something, you'll see I have a shaky hand if I try to go really slow with a, stabler, with a stabilizer on. And you'll see it's like the pull on the string approach. And this really works handy. So if you have, if you're going to be doing a long line, it's recommended that you have your length up high. If you're going to be doing a short line, have your length very low. Okay, so let's get back to it. First, I'm going to create a new vector layer. Gonna name this head. I'm gonna be making a character, King Babula, and you always organize your layers when drawing. So now I'm gonna zoom in and increase the stabilizer a little bit. Okay. And I'm gonna be doing things a little differently. I'm gonna be drawing in all open paths. And then later on, we're going to be converting those open paths into closed paths. I find it easier to actually start off by drawing in open paths. Okay, now while the pencil tool is selected, I'm going to hold Command. So the No tool is currently selected, is currently available. Now when I let go of command, I'm back to the pencil tool. So I'm going to press it again, hold command, select that. 
And uh, for Windows users, you would hold control for that. But this is beneficial for if you don't, in case you don't want to keep going back to the node tool, you could just do it right when you're using the pencil. Oh, and King Babula is a frog, as you can guess. He is uh, not actually a king, though. He's just a greedy thief who loves music. He steals disco balls and uh, track lights, boom boxes, and everything. Okay, now I'm going to create a new layer for the crown. So, and I'll, But I want to have the crown be in the layer behind the head layer because the crown is going to be hiding behind the crown. For this, I'm going to take the pen tool. And I'm doing this because I don't want to have any gap space like that. So while I'm um, holding that last node, I'm just going to move my cursor up. So um, this line goes down. And I want to make sure that these points are evened out. So I'll hold Command again, select these nodes, and bring it over a little. Now I'm going to create a diamond. I'm going to just use one of the um, shade presets. Command J to duplicate it, to make a copy. It would be Control J for Windows. And now while I'm selecting this bounding box, we're going to hold both Command and Shift. And then the sides of the crown will have little circle gems. Command J again. And I want this behind that other circle. Now while that's selected, I'm going to hold Command and just drag this. And that makes a duplicate. Okay, now I want to quickly show you how I would um, convert the head into a closed shape. Because you see these are um, open paths and so is the mouth. So for this, take the No tool. First of all, I'll bring this closer so it, it's um, there, so it's closed up. I'm gonna add a node right here. Then I'm gonna break the curve. Go over here. Do the same over here. Make a node right here, and then break the curve. Now I'm gonna select King Babula's chin, and I'm gonna select the upper part of his head. Oh, and this is another path as well. Now with all that selected, I'm going to click here, Join Curves. And now you'll see that his head is a closed shape. And now I'm going to do the same with his mouth. Although I see this line is accidentally overshooting. So I'm going to select these two. All right, and I think I can join them the way they are already. Yep. Okay, now his mouth is a closed shape. There, I'm done. I close up his head that easily. Now, before I go into making his body, I'm going to make his shoulders. And his shoulders are going to come up in front of his head, so I'm going to create a new layer on top of the head layer. And I'll say arms. Also, when you are drawing, be aware that you can rotate your curve from a, a certain angle by clicking on this button right here, Show Rotation Point. Then I'm going to move it right here. Okay, here is one arm. It probably looks confusing right now because this is an open path, this is an open path, this is an open path, this is an open path. So you're probably thinking, well, how can I uh, do this? Well, I will show you. Now you are going to picture an imaginary um, curve going all across this way. So we're going to break this curve here. I use the node tool and I just click to add a new node.
break curve, add and break. Bring that over. Oh, and uh, while you um, spin the wheel, you can go up and down, and if you hold shift, you go left and right. For this, I'm going to break curve right here. And now I'm going to delete this one. Okay, now I'm going to select each of these paths that make up a closed region. Some of the selections may not show because I am using a screencast software <laughs> meanwhile. Now I'm going to click join curves. And now I just joined all of this. And now if I added a color, I'm going to have a body layer behind the head layer. So I want to have this come down. Oh, and look at this. The line that was right here is not showing. It got uh, set, be it was set behind this one. So with this selected, I'm going to go back go back again All right, and I realized these were two different curves here join when you're connecting points um, you don't always want to um, click and drag and connect it that way designer gets a little sensitive so just bring it as close as possible and then close curve Here is one side of the robe. Here is another. I want to have. I want to. Um, rather than trying to bend this over like that, I'm gonna just redraw. Now I know what to erase. I'm gonna just slide that over. Click this. Add a node, um, or just move that node right there. Break curve, delete, and you see what I'm doing now. Okay, now it looks like I'm just about done with his robe. I'm still gonna have his body under the robe. Now, this probably looks confusing right now, and I took out the color of his arm just because I wanted to show you something. Now once I add color it will start to make a little more sense. So I'm gonna have um, his coat be blue color like that. And I'm gonna have his arm be a blue color. And for the body I'm gonna add just another line just like right under his arm. kind of some folds in the robe. Let's say I wanted to add a gradient on this coat. If I select the arm, do something like that, and then select the coat, do something like that, you'll see that the two do not flow together. You get this space right here. So to avoid that, select them both at once. Now use the gradient. All right. Now I am not going to close this path because his other arm is going to be behind the body layer. So I want to have an opening for his arm to come out. But I'm still going to apply color. Okay, now for this arm, see how I have this gap space right here? So I'm going to do this. And here we are. King Babula.